how do you accelerate good things happening? So from my perspective, I'd like everyone to deepen access on your own inner healer. I'm not your healer. I'm going to help you access your healer. Um, I would like everyone to get an idea of the sort of basic map that they're dealing with. I tend to think of IFS as the bones and somatic experiencing as the flesh. So this is the bones. What is the core dynamic and having a simple explanation for yourself? And then I would hope that people can experience shifts as we do practices and as we have experiences together, as you meet each other, that your system actually shifts and we'll be paying attention to that and noticing what's different in the moment. And then as we have enough of those experiences, your system begins to reconfigure towards safety of a threat and toward regulation and all the good things that support healing. And the final one here, I've just put in that there'll be times when the heart expands, good things happen. Maybe you make progress in your own healing or your own journey. And then I also want to honor when we hit our resistance, when we have conflict with each other, when there are technical problems. We can't expand forever. Managing contractions well is almost more important than what you do in the expansions. I've thrown up some of the main influences and people I've studied with, and I recognize the lack of diversity here. Hopefully that changes over time. The two on the outside, Peter, a lot of the somatic experiencing core of what we're doing comes from him, Peter Levine, and Dick Schwartz on the right with the IFS system. And then the other one I would just want to call out is Thomas Hubel, second. A lot of the actual process work and actually like how you do this, how you actually cultivate the right conditions, I draw from Thomas. I find Thomas very helpful. So this is the basic pattern. I've noticed this in my client work. There's many different maladies, many different issues, but there's a basic thing. Either the clients are stuck or they're flowing. This is a common pathway in sessions over time that when we're stuck, we're essentially have become disconnected from ourselves. And then all kinds of symptoms can reflect that, but there's a basic disconnection and you see the thoughts there in red are cycling or looping and not necessarily helping. They're not well organized because they're not connected to the body. And if you read on the left there, we're disconnected, dysregulated, thinking identified, protector led. And we're going to get into some of the IFS language, a protective layer, a way of dealing with the world that's not deeply embodied. The body becomes a threat. Often we experience pain from the body because we're not properly connected. It's not a safe zone. And stories of despair seem like the truth. And then as we start to feel the stuckness and we really connect to ourselves, naturally a process happens where things start to flow, we become connected, the system is able to regulate itself. That's something we're going to be working toward where we're not having to manage our anxiety as much. We might use top-down intervention sometimes, but the body itself has become regulating. And we're self-led, self is a concept in IFS we'll talk about. The body becomes safe and stories of hope become more true. So the word accelerate might seem to some unusual in psychology because we tend to slow things down. And often when, you know, this rush to get better, this rush to heal, to, you know, get ahead in life, a lot of people are in repeating loops and our, the rush itself is part of the problem. And so accelerating doesn't mean doing what you're doing already just harder or faster. Accelerating means slowing down and connecting to the deeper wisdom in your system and then starting from there moving forward in a way that's not just a repetition so getting outside of the rat race or the wheel of samsara so a few points to accelerate healing first question is why are we not well why are we not connected what is the block what is our block and a basic philosophy of this course is if we kick the boulder away, the stream knows how to flow. I don't have to teach you everything about your system. I don't have to teach you everything about the world. Your system has an innate intelligence. Once it's flowing, you can access that. And so we remove the obstacle and the rest happens of itself. 
we don't do healing we just cultivate the conditions like in the meditation and if we align with nature then we can trust the direction it may feel slow but things compound and things happen that start from the right place and are built on the right foundation and this is another basic tenet the more online we are the more nervous system we have see some yawns which is really great people coming down people coming online the more online we are the more we can trust ourselves and trust our thinking there's more neurons devoted to our thinking so it's better thinking it becomes wisdom and then a basic pattern is we're going to be observing protectors observing when we get caught up in something and learning to unblend bring in self energy which we'll talk about a human connection because protectors cut us off from connection we go inside we get stuck and cut off and updates that's the important role of feeling is to update thinking when thinking gets stuck and then unburdening will be an important concept you can think of it as experiencing and releasing emotional pain that can relate to past events can relate to just the basic conditions of your childhood it can seem like things that wouldn't even be that big of a trauma but for your system that is your trauma and to unburdening is at the root of getting to the emotional pain that's at the root of whatever your system is experiencing something we're aiming for is more connection with the emotional core and then that becomes home base and so that's your secure attachment that's your place that you operate from and you're not operating from your protective layer but you already are connected from a place of robust vulnerability and to the question how long will it take one of the important milestones in healing is when we give up that question so that we're in thomas's words walking forever that we're more and more in the field which you can is an expression that means many things but in the field you can think of as connected to your nervous system and other people's nervous systems and it's a feeling when you're there it's a good feeling and you're in the right place and so if we can get to that place more and more then life is becoming good and there's no destination that carries on forever This is a basic map. Maps don't need to get that complicated. What's important is noticing what are your main protective strategies? How do you block your deeper connection and your connection with others? And slowly we'll be gaining more access to the core. Often for a lot of people the core is exiled or disavowed. And so bringing that back to life is one of our goals. And then you'll see the dotted line around the circle is what ifs call self energy or self and this is the perspective where we see the whole system and we drop into the wider nervous system so we're deeply connected and we can see what's operating and that becomes a place of identity a place where we can rest so protectors crystallize at difficult times they're parts of ourselves that are usually very young and are a way of dealing with a difficult world or chaos or not getting reflected or getting your needs met so we come up with these protectors they are intelligent they serve an important role in our system and they come from somewhere they didn't come from nowhere and then as they become stronger protectors they can become a shield and we can become a walking defense mechanism where we're locked inside of ourselves or feel jailed or feel overly protected and then we're blocked from life we're blocked from nourishment from source energy and there we might experience all kinds of symptoms in this place but the basic thing is that we've become protector identified this is going to be an important mantra in the course the story that you tell yourself depends on the state of your nervous system So the story that seems true comes from what state you're in. It's not easy to change the story to influence your state. It's easier to change the state of your nervous system to influence the story. To move from a story of despair to one of hope for instance. So that's going to be very important for us. And I adapted this from a meme I saw online. So that you can think of the monsters as protectors, all these things that plague us. 
when we're cut off from ourselves and they've really become powerful in our system. And we're trying to navigate around them. We're trying to avoid them. We're desperately running around. And we can't really fight them in that state. They are stronger than us. But then there's this thing, embodiment, where some, sometimes something can happen where we drop into ourselves. And that these monsters really change in character and they become much smaller, much more easy to deal with. And so the basic thing we're moving here is from top to bottom, from that state where we're disconnected or outside of ourselves to one of where of connection, deep feeling, and then everything feels different when you're in that place. You might've heard of spiritual bypassing or emotional bypassing. Spirituality can sometimes be accused of that, where it's feel good vibes, ignore your problems, escape, and that's not what we're doing. The obstacle is the way we're going into our issues and deepening our self-understanding. We're working from the top, which is regarded as thinking, mindfulness, spirituality, and we're working from the bottom, which is emotional processing, the real facts of your life, the facts of your relationship and your job. And so this is not a bypass. So another important concept here. So suffering, this red thing is something happening in your life, the dark red bar. And then if we bottle it up or put it away, then we experience a mild discomfort or we go through our day, just something is off. We're not ourselves. We're irritable. So we've somehow carried it with us. It's now part of our system. So in this course, the goal is to deeply experience the challenge the difficult thing, the pain, the anxiety. We really experience it and then it processes through. We experience through it. And then the system lets go of it because we've heard the message. Now we can hang up the phone. And then we get back to the tan color. We get back to regulate it. Now we're back. So that instead of bypassing, we're actually feeling the thing in order to shift our system. This is something Peter Levine said, which I really appreciate, which is as we practice more and more, our system becomes safer and safer. So the actual tone of our underlying emotional core goes from scary and threatening to, in Peter's words, it, it takes on a nostalgic or rose-tinted color. There's challenge there, but you could think of a drama on a play. The backdrop of the play is a painted landscape, which is beautiful. And so now we have enough secure attachment. The body is enough of a safe vessel that we can hold the drama without feeling like the whole house is burning, the whole theater is burning down, or that there's a basic tone of safety to what we're doing. Another note on self-energy. So rising above is something we'll talk about. Getting to the point of seeing through the eyes of the protector to seeing the protector from a position of self. This is the goal in our group so that we are able to operate with each other from a place of feeling connection and not our usual social masks or our other ways of being, which are protected. So I'd like everyone to fill out this worksheet. We're going to break for seven minutes. And I want you to just commit to what you actually intend to do. This is the spirit of it. You're not going to try to do this. This is what you're going to do. So don't overcommit. Even if it's just attend this group. If that's all you can really do, then just write that. If you can do something else, if you're already doing something else, then make that part of your plan. Like actually crystallize it. And this is a minimum. So that when you hit the minimum, you can feel good. You're doing what you've intended. And the idea is that we create the conditions for something to happen. So the more you can cut out substance, the more you can nurture your own emotional experience, practice, the more something can happen for you, almost like you're on a retreat. Think of it as an urban retreat. 